Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it hanging man because that pattern, that candlestick pattern, is showing up in two of the major indices, and we'll talk about that in a little while. I'm going to start off and talk about my ETF dashboard that I share with my members every Saturday. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the major sectors and the index ETFs, and then we'll drill in and take a look at the S&P 500 and the SPY and look at the LU wave picture on the SPY, and then look at a couple of key indicators. And then I'm going to look at gold and silver today. Okay, let's start off here with the ETF dashboard. This week, we had 10 sectors positive. There's 16 that I track in this area right here. 10 positive, 6 negative. The week before, very, very strong. 15 up, 1 down. And I believe the week before that, I think it was... 16 up and zero down. Now, all of the sectors have gone positive on the year. It happened a couple of weeks ago with all that strength that kicked in and that bounce coming off that August 5th low. So the strongest mover to the upside this last week with financials, almost 3%. And then retail down 2.2% was the weakest sector. For the year, no surprise, semiconductors has have continued to be the strongest sector. And when you go to the second and third place, you know, they're in the 20s, but, you know, quite a bit distance between the home builders and the semiconductors. But the home builders have really kicked it into high gear. When we look at the index ETFs, the strongest mover was the Dow Industrials. And then the weakest were the Qs, the NASDAQ 100, down uh, about three quarters of a percent. The only other, uh, uh, index that was negative this week was uh, the Russell 2000, down slightly, but they're all positive on the year at the moment. And the S&P 500 continues to edge out the NASDAQ 100 to the upside on the year. Okay, let's take a look at our indices. Okay, here's a side-by-side -side view of the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100. The Dow was up uh, 388 points for three weeks in a row. Big, strong, four, four bullish candles. You know, this reversal candle that happened down here the first week of August. But uh, up 388 this last week. The S&P 500, small gain, 13.79. Okay. And then over here, we had a negative on the NASDAQ 100. It was down 146 points. So they took out the prior week low and closed down on the week. Okay, let's take a look at the S&P 500. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home page here. So here's that view we were just looking at, and here's the daily view. So th what's interesting about this is, you know, we had a big strong move this last, uh, on Friday, up 56.44, and that really salvaged the week to be up only 13.79 on the week and 56.44 on Friday. And so what happened on Friday? Well, when you look at the 30 minute chart, here's the last two hours of the day. Okay, so, you know, here's the close, the prior close right here on Thursday. We gap up, sell back off middle of the day and then start to turn and have the explosion in the last two hours of the day. Now, not really too much of a surprise because end of the week, end of the month kind of thing after having a big strong move to the upside in here. So a little bit of positioning prior to the Labor Day weekend. So, you know, we're closed on Monday. So we'll see what happens come this coming week. Now, I am expecting, let me go to the SPY. Let me go. So here's the same picture with the SPY. It was up 5.33 on Friday and up $1.55 on the week. Now, I'm expecting this to continue to push a little bit higher. Let me go to the weekly count. This is my preferred count right now. I ignore that. I'm getting a little notice there. Um, it, that's just a path forward. I'm not giving you a projection of it. that wave five is going to be up here. I do have a projection. I'm just not talking about that right now. So this is my preferred count. I'll tell you, I do have an alternate. The alternate says 
maybe that this is just an A, B wave, and then a C wave to come for a big more sideways minor wave four. But I'm, that's just an alternate in terms of the view. Right now, this has been looking and acting very strong. So I think the way this looks to me, that we have one more little push to the upside in here to finish off this fifth little wave within minute wave one. Okay, then we're going to get a correction on wave two. So depending on how big of a push we get and what do we get to the upside, then that's going to determine, you know, where our possibilities are for a wave two pullback, knowing that a wave two typically retraces around 50% or greater in terms of the retracement of wave one. So let's see what we get in this final little push in here to finish off this first wave of minor five. Okay, and, and we're talking minor five of what? Minor five of intermediate wave three. Okay, so that's, that's where we sit. That's the preferred count. That's what we're looking at. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, I know what I want to do right now. Let me go back to this view. And I want to go back to that side by side. And I'm going to show you that hanging man. Okay, remember that side-by-side -side view? When you go to the monthly, here's where it shows up. On the Dow Industrials. Okay. Pretty clear. I mean, it's pretty clear, pretty classic looking hanging man. S&P 500, same thing. Now, you're not really seeing it the way, you know, in an ideal hanging man. You're not really seeing it on NASDAQ 100. And the thing that's really got my attention about it here on the S&P 500 again, this is a monthly, is that there's several things you like to look for on a hanging man uh, in that it's near all-time highs. Yep, check that. It's after a big strong move to the upside. Yeah, that's been going on, especially since the uh, September of last year, last fall. We've had one, uh, you know, negative, really negative month, April. Okay, all the rest of them we've been pushing to the upside. So then all of a sudden we get this. Now, is there any guarantee about this particular candlestick setup? No, absolutely not. But it does get kind of give you a little flag that says, hmm, well, let's see what happens in the month of September. But, you know, this is one of those potential reversal type candles that is always, you know, it's the opposite of a hammer. Okay, so... All right, there's the hanging man. Now let's uh, let's talk about a couple of indicators. Let me go back to the moving average view, and I want to talk about the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average in the uh, in the S&P 500. Okay, we're sitting at 81.3 percent right here on Friday's close. Now we're getting up into that rarefied air above 80 percent. Okay, so we got there at the end of March. And then last, you know, December, uh, actually, yeah, December into January, we got up and actually stretched to 90%. Got really close back over here, July of 23, July of last year, before we had that big sell off into the fall. So we're starting to get into that territory where we need to be on alert. And of course, if I'm looking for one more push in the S&P, well, that kind of fits. Now, when we look at the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average, we're also kind of getting up into that area. Okay, we're sitting at 78%, but we've had this peak over here. When was this? This was July before we had that, you know, big whatever you want to call what we had at the beginning of August. Uh, you know, the Japanese carry trade collapse type thing and, and whatever, and volatility trade that collapsed, low volatility trade. Okay, so here's a high on July 17th, 80.68. Then you go back over here to May, and then you go back to the end of March before the April sell-off. So we got a few peaks that have occurred here this year and we're starting to get close to that territory again. So again, I think we've got room 
to the upside short term, we'll see what happens. Just a, a bunch of things that are kind of lining up. Let's take a look at gold. Okay, I'm going to pull up GLD, and here's what I want to do. I want to go to the blue scenario, and I've got daily and weekly. Let's just look at the weekly for now to start off. This is looking, you know, this has been looking and acting very strong, especially after it broke above that, that major resistance area around 194 on GLD. Now, I do think we're getting close to the end of this fifth wave. We may have a little bit more. My projection I had on here uh, for the, um, the third wave, third intermediate wave, was up here around 234-ish. We already kind of got there with the prior week. So when I look at the daily, here's the way it looks to me. I, it looks like since that little fourth wave, strong fourth wave pullback, I think we had one, two, three, sideways four in here. I think we got one more little push to the upside here on wave five. So we'll see how that plays out. And I've got a similar, let's take a look at silver. SLV is also looking bullish to me. We, we broke above that major resistance area, okay, at around 27, you know, what was it? 27.50 to 28, let's say. And we closed above it, and I thought, here we go. And then it was just a little bit of a trap, and we have a zigzag pullback. So if this wave two pullback is really holding, my projection for minor three is at a minimum 35.65 on SLV. Okay, this needs to hold for that to project. That is simply where three would equal one. Okay, and you know third waves have a tendency to extend. So we'll see what happens. But we need to see this start to push up. It was down 85 cents here for the last week. And uh, of course, GLD, you saw what, what that was on the screen in terms of it had a little bit of a pullback. So this picture is looking kind of interesting. All right, so let's take a look at, um, here's what I want to do. So I'm going to go back to gold, GLD. I want to go to this view right here. Now, look at this long-term monthly view. This is where I've got SLV overlaid on GLD. So if you go back, here's the peaks. SLV peaked in April of 2011. Okay, That was five months ahead of the peak for gold, which occurred in September of 2011. Now look how silver has lagged. You know, gold, GLD, it pushed above the 2011 highs, and then now we've pushed above these 2020 and 2022 highs. Pretty, pretty nice strong move. Wow, if SLV plays catch up like I'm expecting it to, this could be one heck of a move. Real question is, are we going to get something similar to what happened in 2010? We'll see. Okay, it could be could be a real interesting scenario for silver, but we need to get it to start operating on a uh, short-term basis to start cooperating and pushing higher, continuing to push higher. So here's GLD. It was down 73 cents on the week and $1.66 on Friday. I forgot to talk about what actually happened. Okay, that's it for this week. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.